So, and welcome back to another episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. Today, we're going to go through another book summary. A book summary that is uh, not only a book summary, but also um, gives more information and better information about whatever the book is discussing. And it's just trying to yeah, clarify a ton of things, which is really amazing, you know. So therefore, it's not only a book summary, but it's just also kind of a better version of the book. But yeah, with that being said, I'm gonna see after the intro. The amazing intro. But yeah, um, the book is actually called, and I'm searching for it now. And if I haven't mentioned yet, we are on the powermoves.com site, so the powermoves.com site. Um, it is a site that I've actually also included back in the days of me uh, having a top, I think five or 10 might have been, and also top 17 book summary sites. And it's always been one of them just because it has really well done summaries and, you know, apparently also more than summaries, which is uh, pretty great to see and an amazing thing. Um, and the book is called The Art of Worldly, Worldly Wisdom. And apparently, the Art of Worldly Wisdom from 1647, and this is basically also one of the reasons why the author decided, so the author of the summary decided to retranslate certain things, you know, since examples, metaphors, and um, such things, they are not really up to date, and the chance of somebody not understanding that is quite high. So the author decided to retranslate that. And do a better job of explaining everything, which is really tremendously amazing. So there we go. Um, today I've actually already had a look at it to see whether it is good or it isn't. And something that I wanted to point out before is that this kind of was the basis, as you can see here, for uh, the 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Um, also, interesting book, even though I do have to point out that a lot of Robert Greene's books, I'd always kind of take them with a grain of salt. You know, I always read them in a way that, um, well, I do not really believe everything that he's talking about. And I, I try as much as I can to, to rethink things or think through things to actually decide for myself whether I want to believe in it and um, whether it kind of makes sense to some degree. Of course, this may be a wrong decisions may be a wrong approach to, to certain books like these, since I may just not know, period. But anyway, let's see. This summary of the art of worldly wisdom focuses on the best of the best, for the reader's sake and to deliver more value. I took the liberty to, and this is what I was referring to before, but just to clarify it once again or even more. First, I grouped similar maxims under big umbrellas. Second, if mixed, the best available translations for each maxim. Uh, I'm sorry, I mixed. Uh, when available translations were poor, I've made them my own. I streamlined some mark maxims explanations and cut out cryptic references to old myths slash texts. And I also amended some titles to improve the title slash context or content match. So in the end, uh, it is just a better version than the book is. And as I was talking about Robert Greene and me, well, not disliking his work, but, um, well, anyway, I thought, well, if somebody did a similar thing to his books, it would have been quite great because also in this summary, <clears throat> uh, the author of the summary points out certain, uh, um, certain things that he believes in and certain things that he thinks is the truth or the truth and um, which is really important for me at least, you know, because um, he really kind of makes sure that people understand whatever is discussed in this book and whether this is a good approach or isn't according to nowadays standards and nowadays life, you know, since it is a relatively old book, period, which is not necessarily something bad, you know, because a lot of rules, actually really a ton of rules, can still be applied to modern life, but some things are just outdated. 
but yeah. Um, maybe I'm actually gonna start from the very bottom. For whatever reason, I'm actually not quite sure, but let's just do it. Negatives, pros, and stuff like that. There's always like uh, some smaller headlines as this one. Don't outshine your boss slash more maxims. More maxims. I'm just going to start there. Some more lessons learned. What I specifically like about this books, uh, about these type of books in general, and this book is that it is just, you know, a collection of different thoughts and different things, well, maxims in the end, or aphorisms, one could also say. I do not know the exact definition, but partly uh, one of the reasons why I also like uh, the author of The Black Swan, uh, Nicholas Taleb, or Taleb, whatever. Amazing books, really interesting things, just, you know, because you can go through them and um, fairly easy to consume. Original title, avoid victories over your superiors. All victories breed hate and that over your superior is foolish or fatal. Superiority is always odious, especially to superiors and souverains. The common sort of advantages can be courteously hidden as beauty is hidden with a touch of artful neglect. Most people do not mind being surpassed in good fortune, character or temperament, but no one, especially not a sovereign, likes to be surpassed in intelligence. For this is the kind, the king of attributes and any crime against it is laissez majesty or something. <laughs> um, they want to be so in what is most important. Princes like to be helped, but not surpassed. When you counsel someone, you should appear to be remind, reminding him of something he had forgotten, not of the light he was unable to see. And this is indeed something that I do tremendously like. I do hate giving other people the feeling that they are not good enough and that they are dumb and that they have, you know, made a mistake even. You know, I, I try quite always to, to phrase it in a way that they do not just feel bad about themselves, period. Why I do so? It's not actually for the reason of, okay, me, <laughs> me being in a better light because of that and, and using this as an, an advantage later on in this relationship. But I just you know, don't like people feeling bad about themselves. And I think that it's just really unnecessary on one hand. And on the other hand, it's, um, well, if I can do something better, why shouldn't I? And I'd assume that this is actually enough of a reason. Um, it is the star who teaches us this subtly. They are brilliant suns, but they never dare to, sh to outshine the sun. You know, just besides the fact that they can't, but anyway. Find out each man's thumbscrew. Whatever a fucking thumbscrew is, but anyway. The art of moving people's wills evolves more skill than determination. You must know how to get inside the other person. Each will has its own special object of delight. They vary according to taste. Everyone idolizes something. Some wants to be well thought, thought of, I'm sorry. Others idolize profit and most people idolize pleasure. Skill consists in knowing these idols in order to bring them into play. It is like having the key to someone else's desires. Go for the prime mover, which, is, which isn't always something lofty and important. Usually it is something low. For the unruly outnumber the well-ruled, first size up someone's character and then touch on his weak point. Tempt him with his particular pleasure and you will checkmate his will. Um, this sounds very, very, very uh, manipulative. Something that I in general dislike. But it's also pretty interesting to, know, to, to just know about it because then you also can notice and realize when somebody's doing this to yourself. And you can act against it. And I think in, in a way that is, well, actually, once again, not gonna um, let the other person feel dumb, quite. You know, maybe in a very subtle way, you know, in a very subtle way that um, just makes it clear enough for the person that you just know things. 
and know about these things and you know that this person is trying to manipulate you and you are well aware of that. Most often, I guess, people are just gonna react in a very, well, you know, one could say faked way of, okay, you know, I didn't want to, to, to let you feel like that or some shit. You know what I mean. Select the lucky and avoid the unlucky. Note, this is not always true. Sometimes helping up a high quality individual who was just being unlucky can provide you with the highest possible social ROI, quote unquote. And yes, um, this is particularly what, I'm, what I meant by um, the author of the summary clarifying things and giving his opinion as well, which is always an amazing thing because if I only read it like, okay, select the lucky and avoid the unlucky. Do I believe in this? No. Would I have pointed it out? Yes. But so I'm having three opinions. I'm having my own opinion. I'm having the opinion of the author of the original book or the original work, but I'm also having the third one, which is the opinion of the author of the summary. And it is very valuable. Opinions are valuable, especially opinions of people that matter, you know, that I am basically listening to, which is something that I decide, by the way. Avoid complaints, share what you want more of. Yes, it's a good way to, you know, I'm not even going to read the, the whole uh, paragraph here, but I think it makes sense. I think it really does. Um, especially also when leading people, which is a way of, you know, telling them what you would like to see <clears throat> without um, making them think that they did something wrong. Quite. You know, it, it is a... A clear difference I'd assume if you say okay um, I do not want this anymore I do not want that anymore I do not want to see this anymore but saying okay I'd like to see more of that could you do this please I'd like to have more of that and then a person thinks like well yeah okay I'm, I'm gonna get you more of that that's a good idea maybe well not, not maybe but for sure also then um, saying why you want more of that Maybe even pointing out, well, I, I just, just particularly like what you did there. Could you do more of this? You're not just communicating in a way that serves others, you know, and in ways that do not spark any conflict. You know, communicating in the, in the least confrontational way one can in uh, the way of just you know just making people feel good about themselves period i guess this is the easiest way to explain what i think about know the great man of your age there are not many there is one phoenix in the whole world one great general one perfect orator or orator whatever one true philosopher in a century a really illustrious king in several mediocrities are as numerous as they are worth less, eminent greatness is rare in every respect. Yeah, really the case. But now you have to decide what does it mean for you to be a great man, you know? It is something that you decide then because you also choose the people, you know? And the people that you choose are those people that um, fulfill the certain criteria or criteria that you've had. And um, what is important in nowadays age? Learn to use scorn. One way to get things is to scorn them. When you look for them, they aren't there and later, without you trying, they come running. Scorn is also the screwest way to take revenge. <laughs> a wise maxim, never defend yourself with the pen, for this leaves a trail and glorifies your rivals rather than punishing them for their insolence. Unworthy people cunningly oppose the great, they try to win fame indirectly without really deserving it. Many people would be unknown if their excellent opponents had paid them no heed. There is no revenge like oblivion, burying others in the dust of their in, 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 inanity, I guess. Impudent fools, they try to become immortal by setting fire to the wonders of the world and of the centuries. One way to quiet vulgar murmuring is to ignore it, to impugn... I guess it will harm you. To give it credit brings discredit on you. Be happy that people want to emulate you, though their breath can tarnish. 
if not blacken the greatest perfection. Well, <clears throat> yes, but this is very difficult. Note, this is the disdain things you cannot have in the 48 laws of power, but Balthasar goes deeper. By the way, uh, this book is written by a certain Balthasar, as I notice right now, and I haven't talked about it yet, but still, I just wanted to point it out. Have a touch of the practical, practical slash trader. Not everything should be speculation, you must also act. The wisest are easiest to deceive. They may know extraordinary things, but they know nothing of life's ordinary necessities. So let the wise have a touch of the practical, enough not to be deceived and mocked. <laughs> know how to get things done. It may not be the highest thing in life, but it is the most necessary. What good knowledge if it isn't practical? These days true knowledge lies in knowing how to live. Note, I'd say that you should have more than a touch. Practical is what achieves goals and brings results. You know, basically something that I've been philosophical about for years now, which is acting is always going to be better than thinking. It's always going to be better than pondering. It's always going to be better than just inaction. Action is always going to trump everything, period. Because action is the driver of results and change and everything else. And so it just makes sense that it is important. Because I can think a lot, I can have a lot of ideas, but if I do nothing with them, then uh, I did nothing with them. Period. Allow yourself to be choked about, but don't choke about others. Well, I'm going to skip that one. Better editing needed. Some laws have one title, then talk about something totally different. Sometimes cryptic. Uh, is it like the total cons of the book? Oh yeah, it's the total cons of the book. So let's actually move up to, let's see, let's see. Social exchange strategies. A group here, a set of maxims that all fall under what we have identified on this website as a larger cluster of social exchange dynamics. I also highly recommend you to take a look at social exchange theory. Even better, see the lessons in Power University, which is much deeper. Blah, 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 blah. They include, do not waste favor and connection for small things. Yes. Yes. As much as I want to believe that when it comes to friends for example and it really depends on what type of friend that you know there is an infinite amount of favors that you have and i do not necessarily know what the paragraph is going to be about what this maxim is going to be about but it's just something that came to mind my mind um it really depends on uh, Friendship, it really depends on the person, it depends on very, well, basically a lot of things, but also context, you know? But I would really also suggest not to waste favors for very small things, things that um, might just only um, be based on convenience, you know? You just do not want to look something up, you do not want to inform yourself, you do not want to do X, Y, and Z, and whatnot. Still, I think, though, that um, if you kind of know that you can give that back, that it is fine. Since what I thought about favors is, you know, doing a favor for somebody kind of gives you the same amount of value back. You know, you also have a favor right now. You know, you, you can ask for a favor just because you have given one or you've done something. And... Um, I do not really like being in debt in any way, whether it is financially, whether it is in, in terms of favors, whether it is in terms of whatever. I don't like that. I do always want to be the person that has more done than received, period. I do think about one certain relationship though, where I do ask for a lot. I really, really do. But I do not feel bad about that. 
you no know, one could really be philosophical about that right now, but still, um, I think that I'm also giving things back, I'd assume, I think, I hope. <laughs> let's just stick with I hope. Um, but anyway, let's actually see what this is all about. The great as friends are for great occasions. One should not make use of great con uh, confidence, I'm sorry, for little things, for that is to waste a favor. The sheet anchor should be reserved for the last extremity. If you use up the great for little ends, what remains afterwards? Nothing is more valuable than a protector and nothing costs more nowadays than a favor. It can make or unmake a whole world. It can even give sense and take it away. As nature and fame are favorable to the wise, so luck is generally envious of them. It is therefore more important to keep the favor of the mighty than goods and chattels. Don't take payment in politeness. It is a cheat. Some people, in order to cast a spell, have no need of magic potions. By doffing their hats the right way, they bewitch fools, the vain that is, or the vain that is. They sell honor and pay their debts with a gust of fine words. He who promises everything promises nothing. Promises are a trap for fools. True courtesy is a duty. False courtesy at the sight and excessive courtesy isn't dignity but dependence. Those who practice it bow not to the person but to his wealth and to his flattery. Not to good qualities but to hoped for favors. And there is also a note, uh, presumably an important one. Note the author is talking about social exchange manipulation where one repays a pragmatic favor with good feelings. Well, yeah, you know, then being like, okay, just know that you did so something so amazingly important for me. Um, I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I owe you one. <sighs> thank you so much. And maybe even the next day, yeah, thank you so much. Well, yeah. Sometimes it is enough, you know, I don't want to be like, okay, I just want to get something back. Very often, I just really don't care about that. I like doing nice things, I like just doing things for somebody else. If I do have the time to do so, and the means to do so, um, I do it. But there's also like um, a very narrow path of basically, well, being nice and just kind of ignoring one's own values, time, and so on and so forth. But in the end, if I know that I can help somebody, and that I can do some good, I'm also probably gonna do so. You know, especially when it is not taking that much time, no energy, you know, just replying very quickly. Um, you know, just, just because I'm seeing that I've gotten a message um, of somebody asking me about something, I don't fucking know. You know, then of course, I think about like, okay, you know, it, it might actually be, or probably is pretty good for this person if I reply just directly. Even if it may not be uh, that nice of a moment, yada, yada, yada. Um, or I just do not want to reply, actually. But, you know, I just see, okay, um, it may just be important. Then I'm going to do so. Because why wouldn't I? Only entrust your honor to someone if you have his as leverage. Original title, never trust your honor to another unless you have his in pledge. The penalty for speaking too much and the advantages of silence should be the same for both of you. Where honor is evolved, all must share the same interests, and one's own reputation should make one look out uh, for that of others. It is better not co I'm sorry, it's better not to confide in others, but if you do, arrange matters skillfully so that you that your confident will show not only prudence but caution. Share the risk so that both of you are obeying a common interest and your confident will not turn into a witness against you. Note, a very good maxim to generalize as well. When you give someone you don't know too well a lot of leverage over you, it's good if you also have some leverage over him. It is a mix of social strategy and social exchange. The power dynamics of leverage probably deserves its own category. Well, I'm just thinking about it. What could that mean? You know, just I'm, I'm thinking about an example. Obviously, to a pretty high degree, it's going to be about, you know, quote unquote data. 
maybe secrets. What, what, what could I tell somebody that would be leverage for them? Hmm. I don't actually really know. Something that I also thought about is, isn't it just about you letting this be leverage quite? I mean, of course. Uh, practicing too much of, uh, what is it called? Um, trust may backfire, you know? If you just, I don't know, give somebody a fucking bank account data and password, pin, whatever, um, that you do not just know that well, maybe you shouldn't do that, <laughs> period. Um, I do understand the whole thing, but what may this be? I mean, if I tell somebody a secret, you know, I, or, well, fuck one should be aware that it is not a secret that kind of evolves somebody else because this is nothing this person should know about period um trust is actually a really fucked up thing to be honest you know i, I do trust a lot of people you know I, I i'm actually you know fine with trusting quite a lot of people but what i want to say is okay if i give somebody a secret about myself only about myself not evolving anybody else but me and this person just uses this as leverage. Well, isn't this then because I allowed that to happen? Not only in the sense of, okay, me telling the person <laughs> the secret about myself, but also just letting this be leverage. And not just fucking owning it, I don't know. This is also, you know, pretty interesting in the sense of, uh, I guess it was actually Eminem in, uh, is it 91 miles? 81 miles, something like that, you know, no, 7 miles, I'm actually very sorry, uh, 7 miles, the movie, and in the very end, apparently, there was a rap battle, I, I've never actually seen the movie, but in the rap battle, Eminem was uh, dissing himself, basically, for the sole reason of not leaving anything to say for the opponent, if I own everything, if I own all the shit, that I've done, that I've said, that whatever it might be about myself, nobody can do anything about it. You know, nobody can use anything of that because it is already out there. You know, what can I say? I've already said it. Um, I'm going to end the episode there. Already see that it's been 28 minutes. But yeah, that being said, I'm going to see you the next time. I at least hope. Bye-bye.